So a rather famous science guy named Robert Krulwich called me and said he was going to be sending me an article about sweating. It was kind of weird because I didn't really feel like I needed to read an article at that moment because I happened to be talking to him in a hot car and so I was already sweating my brains out. Now I never really appreciated sweating that much because it makes my shirt all soggy and my hair all wet and nappy and I start to worry that I smell bad, but I was curious to know more about it. The article was about the experiments that this guy named Charles Blagden did about sweating. It was actually kind of hard to read because it was written 200 years ago, and so the words were all spelled like this, and so it took me a little while to get through it. Anyway, Charles Blagden's experiment went like this. He put proper English gentlemen into a not very proper English setting. One at a time, he put them into a small room with a dog, a raw beefsteak, a few eggs, and an iron stove fired up until the room temperature reached 210 degrees Fahrenheit. After a few minutes, the men began to sweat, and the dog began to pant. Understandably, some of the men began to remove their clothes, and as they took turns going into the room, one would say to the other, I say, old boy, I would recommend you remove your trousers in there. Thank you, kind sir. Jolly good idea. It does seem a trifle stuffy, doesn't it? And so on. Now, water would boil at 212 degrees, but even at 210, the men showed no pain. Blagden was curious to know how much more they could stand, and so he continued to heat up the room to 220 degrees, then 240. The men were curious too, although perhaps a little less enthusiastic about it. At 260 degrees, the men were drenched in sweat, but were still able to stay in the room for 7 to 10 minutes at a stretch with what they called tolerable ease. Although they had not quite figured it out yet, it was the sweating that kept them safe. The thin layer of moisture on their bodies was enough to keep them from burning up. Today, we call this process evaporative cooling. However, two of their companions, the steak and eggs, which could not sweat, had been roasted hard and dry. Blagden did not record what the steak and eggs smelled like, and there is probably a very good reason for this. The star of the show was the dog, who showed no other sign of uneasiness other than panting and holding out his tongue, and was able to stay in the room for 30 minutes at a time at 236 degrees. The dog kept cool through his panting and was perfectly lively and fresh as a daisy after leaving the room and getting into the cool air. Sweating is yet another thing that separates us from many other popular protein-based life forms. So now I'm perfectly happy to sweat, and you should be too.